Good afternoon. Welcome to Celebration City, the gathering place of the born again sons of God. We welcome you today. <clears throat> we have a, a wonderful time of worship in the Word. And the Lord has just been just, just, just opening up in just the last five minutes to me just about this this son, this person, you know, this who's isolated, you know, it's like it's like you're all by it's like you're almost by yourself. You're just totally alone, you're isolated, and you you know who you are in Christ. You know the word, you have fellowship with the Lord, and yet you're you're almost all alone and I want you to know that the Lord says you now know and experience what my heart feels like in the world today and and I was reading this scripture here out of Luke it says now it came to pass that on a Sabbath he was making his way through fields which had been sown to crops and his disciples were picking and eating the ears of the grain rubbing them in their hands in order to break them up into smaller pieces and certain of the Pharisees said why are you all doing that which is not lawful on the Sabbath and answering Jesus said to them have you not read even this which David did when he himself was hungry and those with him how he entered the house of God and having taken the loaves of bread which were set forth he ate and gave to those with him which loaves of bread it is not lawful to eat except only for the priests and he was saying to them the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath and it came to pass that on another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and went to teaching. And there was a man there, and his hand, the right one, was shrunk and wasted. And the men learned in the sacred scriptures, and the Pharisees were standing by on guard, carefully observing for themselves whether on the Sabbath he is going to be healing. We're talking about We're talking about you today. I mean, it's what we're, we're talking about you and where you are and you're, you're wondering about why things are the way they are. And what you're experiencing right now is, is, is the heart of God on earth today. That is how God feels in the earth today. <clears throat> He's lonely for anybody's attention or fellowship anybody the Lord will take anybody he fe you're feeling you're tasting the Lord himself not only the goodness of the Lord but also his desire for fellowship to live on earth and walk out life on earth with you and fellowship amongst all brethren so you say why why am I out here why am I well the Lord is out there too with you <clears throat> you know and I've been reading through about David you know in this this exchange between David and Saul where David basically is running from Saul and he's hiding all by himself out in the woods. He's on a constant, he's escaping, he's running. This is Jesus Christ walking out his ministry on earth. Walking his ministry on earth. Walking out through all the Pharisees. He escapes out this way, he's escaping out that way. And you see David, he's, he's, he's escaping too. And he even come to his wife. Saul comes to his wife. It says, Saul sent messengers that night to David's house to watch him, that he might kill him in the morning. 
But Michael, David's wife, told him, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through the window, and he fled and escaped. And Michael took the teraphim, household good luck image, and laid it in the bed, put a pillow of goat's hair at its head, and covered it with a bedspread. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. This is, this is right at the cross. And when the messengers came in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair at its head. Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me? This is, this is the God the Father and, and Satan at the cross. This, why have you deceived me and sent away my enemy so that he has escaped? That's all of us in Christ. Michael answered Saul. He said to me, let me go. Why should I kill you? I, I have no reason to kill you. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt. And it was told Saul, Behold, David is at Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. When they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as the appointed head over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied. When it was told Saul, he sent more messengers and they prophesied. And Saul sent messengers again. They prophesied. So you got, he's on the run here. And, and Saul's looking to kill him. And Saul's sending messengers. And everybody he sends to them prophesies with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is coming on them and prophesying. There's no way out. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. This is Jesus Christ coming. And, and this is the, the death, the crucifixion, the resurrection right here. This is... Then Saul himself went and came to a great well that is in Siku. And he asked, where are Samuel and David? And was told, they are at Naoth and Ramah. So he went on to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God came upon him also. <laughs> and as he went on, he prophesied until he came to Ramah. He took off his royal robes. You know, he took off the three-piece suit. He took off the ha weird hat. He, he threw down all this stuff. This is, this is a new birth. You know, all this stuff he'd been carrying that everybody was telling him he was supposed to carry and he should have that made him look good. Man, he just, he just dropped all of it down. And it says, And as he went on, he prophesied. He took off his royal robes and prophesied before Samuel and laid down stripped. Thus all that day and night. So they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Such great power in the will of God that it's your enemies that are after you in which he's looking to save. It's the enemies that are hunting you down that the Lord wants to speak to. That's Saul. That was Paul. It was, it was them. It's the enemies, the people who, who hate you that the Lord is specifically looking to speak to. <clears throat> and, we, and, and from that point, you know, we, we go on to giving. And he himself, speaking of Jesus, having lifted up his eyes on his disciples, was saying, spiritually prosperous are the poor. Because yours is the kingdom of God. Spiritually prosperous are those who are hungering now. Because your desires shall be satisfied. Spiritually prosperous are those who are now weeping audibly. Because you shall laugh. Spiritually prosperous are you when men shall hate you. And snub you as a disreputable character. And revile you. And contemptuously reject your name as pernicious on the account of of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. 
For in the same manner their fathers were in the habit of doing to the prophets. But woe to you who are abounding in material resources, because you have that solace and cheer which comes from a prosperous state of things and have nothing left to desire. Woe to you who are satiated now, because you shall hunger. Woe to you who are laughing now, because you shall mourn and weep audibly. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. For in the same manner their fathers were accustomed to do so with the false prophets. But I am saying to you who are hearing, be loving your enemies with a divine and sacrificial love. Be handsomely and fairly doing good to those who are hating you. Be invoking blessings upon those who are calling down curses upon you. Be praying for those who are treating you abusively. To the one who is striking you upon the jaw, be offering him also the other side of your jaw. And from the one who takes away your outer garment, do not even withhold your undergarment. Keep on giving to everyone who keeps on asking you. Wow, that is... I'm not a giver. I know you are, but I'm not a giver. Keep on giving to everyone who keeps on asking you. And from the one who takes away the things you possess, stop asking for their return. And even as you are desiring that men should be doing to you, be doing in the same way to them. And assuming that you are loving those who are loving you, what sort of recompense is yours? For even sinners considered as a class of individuals, also are in the habit of loving those who love them. In fact, if you are doing good to those who are doing good to you, what kind of graciousness is yours? Even sinners, considered as a class of individuals, are constantly doing the same thing. And if you lend money at interest to those from whom you hope to receive, what kind of graciousness is yours? This is talking about reward here. Even sinners are in the habit of lending money at interest to sinners in order that they might get back the equivalents. I get something, I give something, I get something. But be loving your enemies. Your enemies. Those who are hunting you down. Those who are coming to kill you. Those who want to take your stuff. He says, love them. Be loving your enemies and be doing good and be lending money at interest, despairing of no one's ability to pay back the loan with interest. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the sons of the Most High, because He Himself is benevolent to those who are ungrateful and those who are pernicious. Wow! The Lord blesses abundantly the completely ungrateful. He blesses the ungrateful. Be becoming compassionate, even as your father is compassionate. And stop judging in a censorious manner, and you shall positively not be the object of censorious judgment. And stop condemning, and you shall positively not be condemned. Be setting free, and you shall be set free. Be constantly giving, and it shall be given you. A generous measure that has been pressed down hard and which has been shaken thoroughly. Now we're talking about, man, loving the enemy. That's what he's, he's talking all up into this point. Not talking about loving those who already love you. He's talking about, man, this is, this is loving people who hate you. These are loving people who take all your stuff, who hit you on the right side of your face and you turn the left, saying, let them hit the other side. Let them take your stuff. When I read this scripture, I know one thing clearly. I, I don't give. I'm not a giver. I, I don't give. I'm not a giver. I mean, you are. You are a giver. But I'm not. I'm not a giver. I don't do this. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. We're going to enter into just... the presence of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord. taste the Lord like Psalms 34 says taste taste the Lord 
is, is not a is not a concept, you know. He's saying, taste me. I mean, taste. It's a, it's a, there's a pleasure in taste. There's, it's greater than the, the person in you. It's the effects of him that you get a taste. And it's because you taste him. You, 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 you're experiencing him in your life that you know he's good because you, you're tasting him. We're going to taste the Lord. Lord, we're going to taste you. Your presence we're going to taste in worship. We just worship you in spirit and in truth. We, we just we come in your presence right now. Come in your presence, Lord. Enter in. We enter in, Lord. Right before you. We're with you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You are the great giver. You are the great. You are the source of love. You are the source of life. You are truth. We taste you. We just your word just just saturates our mouths. We just taste the flavors of reality. We praise you. We just welcome you. We welcome you. Words to come through. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes.
taste the Lord. The Lord is not the taste. The Lord is the bread of life. The taste is your experience, your personal experience with Him. That is the taste that the Lord is looking to give. That living experience of Jesus Christ in you. Everything's changing. Everything's changing. You're, you're giving notice. It, it's like a woman who's pregnant. I mean, she just, she's consumed with this thing inside her, this just living thing. She, everything changes. Her demeanor changes. She, she's not concerned about certain. She's extremely concentrated on this. This life in her is, it's, is it, it's, gro it's moving. It's growing. It's, it, I mean, she's, she, there's something in her, and she gives. She eats differently. She she sits down now, and she used to stand up. She 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 does everything different now. She's her eyes are totally focused on this on this life in her. She's. She's absolutely unconcerned with the things she used to be concerned about. She's totally attentive on this life in her. She, she wasn't sure, but they, they, they pronounced her pregnant. They said, yes, you, you've, you're pregnant. You've, you've, you're pregnant. You're going to give birth. Man, her whole life in that moment changed. The life she lived before was over. The doctor says, you are pregnant. Hey, you got a baby. You got a life inside you. This thing's coming out. Oh, she couldn't, I mean, you know, every month she had this cycle. Every month, this cycle, the blood, the atonement for the sins, the forgiveness. But the, at this time, the Lord, he's just saying, listen, you, you have a new life inside of you man that the old life is in that moment is gone and now all your attention all of your attention is on this new life because it's not it's not a concept it's you f you experience it moving you experience the oh whoa, I gotta sit down and oh oh man I, I can't I can't go over there and well, it's, it's this new life now it, it takes charge it's, dictates your movements. It's, it's beginning to control even your thinking. It's not that you need to think about it, but that it's life in you is ordering your steps. And you were, you were scared at the beginning and says, no, no, this is it. You know, the cycle of the blood, the cycle of bringing the atonement, this cycle is now over. I will bring forth new life new life that you'd never you'd never experience this is already inside to you and it's already coming it's growing while wow, your attention is totally changed it's now solely on bringing forth this child thank you concern was not for the 99 the Lord's heart burned for the one the Lord's heart burned he went after the one he went after the lost 
sheep. His heart burned for the lost. He went out of the encampment. He went out. His heart burned for the lost. You are out in those areas for the lost. You have been put out there and he is with you and his desire is to bless and to give life out into those outer areas hidden in the forest. The covenant was made between Jonathan and David in the darkness of the woods. The love of God was man is in between the two. They made covenant. They made covenant. You are out there not alone. You are not isolated. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you and the Lord is doing something through you. And we as the body are with you and all who are in chains and bonds and prisons in the jungles running from the spears and swords. The Lord God is with you as he is right here right now. He is with you as we are. We release life. All of the abundance that we continually hold in reserve, we release it into you right now. We release this life into you. These extremities, these parts of the bodies that are so active. We release life into you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we release it. We praise you, Father. We thank you for all of, all of what you give us. We're just so thankful for everything that you have given us and continue to give us. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.